What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a video review of the Slab, which is Silly's Lever Action Blaster. This is a 3D printed lever action half dart firing blaster that shoots hard and accurate. It's a beautiful pairing of performance along with having a pleasant emotional reaction to a lever action blaster. It's a very cool blaster. Let's get into it. Starting up front, there's no in-strike barrel lug, but you can see exposed the metal barrel. This isn't a faux barrel. This is a functional compression barrel, which aids in performance and accuracy. And below the barrel, we have a front sling mount right here. Moving up, we have a tactical rail, which is sort of like a Picatinny rail. It's designed a little bit differently, but I was able to clamp on an airsoft attachment. And attached, I have the included little iron sights. And these are pretty cool. They actually have little fiber optic threads right in here, which gives a really awesome sight picture. I don't see that very often in Nerf guns. Moving down, we have a comfortable front handhold, but this isn't like a movable part. It's not pump action. And behind that, you can see the plunger tube spring and all the cool internals. I mean, they're internals normally, but you can see them and touch them. And behind that is the mag well. This blaster shoots exclusively half-length darts. It does not work with Nerf Elite darts. To get that mag out, you hit the mag release, which is on the back of the mag well right here. My blaster didn't come with a magazine, but this is a worker talon mag and it works just fine. It also works with a few other half dart magazines that I have. But the mag well is very nicely flared for very smooth, fast reloads. Moving back to the priming system, this is a lever action blaster, which is super cool. So to prime, you pull down on the lever like that and this whole thing moves forward. Then you pull back on the lever and you're ready to fire once. The prime strength required is surprisingly light given the power of this blaster. And it's a pretty smooth prime. Now it looks really weird because you're moving all of these components, this whole assembly shifts. So it looks really wonky and like a lot's going on, but it's really smooth in the hand. However, as you can see, I've modified my unit with some foam down here. The back of your fingers are not really designed to touch stuff. The front of your hands are. That's where all the padding in your fingers are. Back here, you just have raw bone. So after a few shots, it got really annoying pushing my fingers on this plastic. I'm not complaining about the plastic. It's filleted, it's smooth, it's designed very well. It's just inherently a problem with lever guns. It's just annoying to push the back of your fingers onto a hard material. Even in the real steel world, a lot of people get paracord and wrap that around their lever gun to make it more comfortable to prime. So I did something similar to that. I got a mega dart, cut its head off, slid it down the center, put it around the lever action, then I got some gaffer tape and wrapped it around the foam. So now instead of my hand making contact directly with 3D printed material, I'm pushing against a mega dart. It's not a lot of foam, it's not super thick, but it's more than enough to make this blaster comfortable. And I'm sure there's a more elegant, nicer looking way to do it, but I did that in like 30 seconds. So to prime, you do that. Yeah, you feel just as cool as you look when you use a lever gun. This thing is so much fun to shoot in prime. Moving up to the trigger, the trigger pull is pretty normal when it's behaving, but I had a few issues with this trigger linkage right here getting out of sync. This threaded rod right here is connected to your trigger linkage, and four or five times out of about five or 600 shots, it jimmied itself loose so my trigger linkage would no longer work. It was no longer synced, so I pulled the trigger and it didn't drop the catch. And to fix that, I had to spin this little threaded rod with my fingers to resync this linkage. It's not that big a deal to fix, I'm just surprised at how easily this threaded rod can spin. Like it takes almost no pressure at all to make this thing twirl and once it goes too far it gets out of sync and it no longer works. It wasn't too big a deal, it really only took five seconds to fix but it's definitely worth noting. And I'm not sure if a little silicone ring or a little dot of hot glue would fix that problem permanently. But the trigger pull works pretty normal when it's all synced up and it's working but this blaster also does have slam fire. Meaning you can hold the trigger down and prime and right when the priming handle hits the rear position it fires off. But it's so hard to aim that way I'm not sure I'd recommend it. Back to the grip, it's a lever action gun so obviously the angle is much different than like a standard pistol grip. That being said, it's pretty comfortable. It's definitely long enough for my adult hand, but it's not too thick to alienate a younger hand. So I really think most hand types are gonna be comfortable on this one. Comfortable is relative because lever guns are super weird and some people are just never gonna like them no matter what. But if you shot the Nerf Sling Fire and you like shooting that, this is like a more hardcore version of the Sling Fire, like a lot more hardcore. <laughs> Moving back to the stock, this is a fixed in place, non-adjustable stock. And the length seems very proportional to the rest of the blaster. I'm an adult and I felt it was very comfortable to use. And because the stock is much lower than the rails, you're actually able to use the iron sights. So when your face is on the stock, you can look right down the sights and take very accurate shots. And at the bottom of a stock, we have a sling mount right here. So that's an external overview of the slab. Visually, there's a lot to take in because the internals aren't internal, they're like exposed. So it's very visually stimulating up front and the shell pieces look really cool, but it's very simple to use. After you put your loaded magazine in, you just activate the lever action and fire just like a sling fire. So that's an external overview of the slab. Now I'll show you the blaster firing. Starting with red dart zone half length darts out of a worker talon mag.
slam fire. Operating this blaster was tons of fun. The lever action system is just a blast to use. I did not experience any blaster jams considering this whole assembly moves every time you prime it. I'm blown away by that. But I did have a few malfunctions with the trigger linkage as I've already mentioned. When this problem occurred, this little threaded rod just moved a little bit too far so I'd have to get my fingers and spin it back. After you know that's a problem, it really only takes like three seconds to fix per incident. Other than that, no jams or malfunctions with this blaster. To compare this blaster to others, I put it up on my chronograph. And shooting worker darts achieved an average velocity of 171 feet per second. Shooting Adventure Force half-length darts, 147 feet per second. And shooting Dart Zone half-length darts, 168 feet per second. With the Worker and Dart Zone darts, the performance was pretty good, but I was getting really bad performance out of the Adventure Force black half-length darts. So if you get one of these, I'd really recommend Worker or Dart Zone darts. But the consistency and performance from Worker and Dart Zone darts were great. And as you can see, that firing velocity is way higher than the Nerf Elite Par of 70 feet per second. This is up over the 150 range of the Nexus Pro. This is shooting hard. That is the objective information I can provide on the slab. Now to my personal opinion. Overall, I am very impressed with this blaster. The emotional response I had to using a lever gun that was actually accurate and shot hard was amazing. This blaster made it that playful mechanical appearance and overall emotional reaction to actually using it with performance in a beautiful way. It shoots hard, but it also shoots accurately and really consistently from shot to shot, which might not be a big deal to a lot of people who are shooting and just racking a slide and shooting and they want to feel tactical and they're not looking at their darts. But when I shoot a plinker or a target shooter, I want to hit what I'm aiming at. I like accuracy. So very impressed with this blaster. It was really fun to use, and I don't even consider myself to be a lever action guy, and it was still a blast. And I also dig that they use standard magazines. I know using shells and stuff is super fun, but it also gets kind of old pretty fast. Loading up magazines so you can just spray darts so you're actually shooting instead of loading is part of the fun for me. However, I do have to complain about another thing with this blaster. It rattles considerably. Stuff is just moving around. This trigger linkage is really quite loose within the build. And these little components are like pinned together, but these aren't screwed in. So they move and shift a lot and it just kind of feels a little bit wacky. It's necessary because that's the lever system for the whole assembly to move. So it's like by design. But if you're the type to like everything enclosed and trapped and super secure and not exposed, I don't think this one's for you. So it operates smoothly. It shoots hard, it shoots accurate, and it's really cool to like look at it all move. Like this lever act, the whole assembly moves. I can't even get over it. What a cool design. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's an example of the trigger linkage going out. And that's an example of how quick it is to fix. <laughs> so overall opinion of this one is definitely super high. Now to the question to buy or not to buy. If you're a performance oriented nerfer, I'm not sure I could make a good argument for lever action. Unless you're a super hardcore lever action fan, I think most people would be better off with pump action or top prime. Lever action is super cool, but I think pump action is easier when you're really trying to destroy a target for high rate of fire shots. Who I'd recommend this blaster for is any target shooters or lever action guys who want a high performance blaster. Sling fires are super fun to use, but they don't perform very well. It's fun to shoot them, but I also like to hit what I'm aiming at. This is such a beautiful pairing of cool emotions along with performance in such a unique way. So if you're into lever guns and you want a high performance plinker, yeah, definitely consider buying this one. But that also gets to the price. It is very expensive. I will not make an argument for value with this one. I think there are much cheaper blasters that shoot similar to this one. So if you're not super, super into lever action, I think there are more affordable options. I think this one's going after someone who loves lever action, but wants high performance and they're willing to spend that top dollar. If that's you, yeah, definitely consider this one. Out of dark sent me this sample unit already assembled, but they also have an unassembled version, which is a little less expensive. But this is not like a Nerf assembly when you're just throwing on a front attachment. It's a pretty elaborate assembly. So maybe be honest with yourself and how mechanically inclined you are before buying the kit. <laughs> and on the Out of Darts website, you can customize the colors. This one is Mermaid's Tail, which is this beautiful teal color with just a little bit of sparkle in there, combined with Tangerine, which is this color of orange, and Galactic Black, which is in the grip and some other components. That's just what I have, but you can customize the colors on the Out of Darts website. So hopefully I I've laid out everything you need to make an educated purchase decision on your own. Again, if you'd like to buy one, link in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching, bros, and as always, stay tactical.